Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Bree. And today I'm doing something different. I'm doing a Pepsi versus Coke comparison. Now I'm not I'm not comparing the colas. We're not going to be talking about the colas. Coke wins every time. Fuck Pepsi. The, the, Pepsi is piss water. Uh, don't drink it. Drink Coke. But we're talking about the companies. Uh, the rivalry. So, uh, Coca-Cola famously came on the scene in the late 1800s, um, into the early 1900s, uh, utilizing very heavily images of Santa Claus enjoying uh, Coca-Cola as a, quote, refreshing beverage in their marketing and became the number one cola in the U.S., probably worldwide, uh, for like ever. And then in the hillbilly land of who gives a shit, a knockoff known as Pepsi was concocted. And the company uh, never did catch on in the early days. And so Pepsi Cola uh, started buying up other oddball hillbilly brands like Mountain Dew and... Um, I don't know, Mountain, I guess there are 10,000 Mountain Dew flavors. And uh, sometime in the 80s, Pepsi decided they wanted to get bold and like try to be a legitimate contender to Coca-Cola. And they started what we refer to today as the Cola Wars. What Pepsi did was they started hiring a bunch of rock stars and pop stars and, you know, supermodels and, you know, big Hollywood icons, basically, rich people, pretty rich, fancy, famous people to peddle their product. And it worked. And all of a sudden, Pepsi was like a legitimate thing. And then in the 90s, they did the whole Pepsi points debacle. There's a whole documentary on that on the Netflix if you want to watch it. Something about a fighter jet. Pepsi still to this day never paid a guy. Now, while Pepsi Cola, the soda pop, um, never really was never ever really competitive with Coca Cola head on, there was a brief period where Coke fumbled the ball with New Coke, and Pepsi made some headway, and then Coke quickly course corrected and you know put a stop to that, but. Pepsi has always been second fiddle in the Cola Wars. However, the ace up their sleeve, their secret weapon, as I mentioned or alluded to a few seconds ago, is Mountain Fucking Dew. Somehow, against all odds, Mountain Dew became the drink of my generation. If you were alive, if you were a teenager or a preteen or post-teen, you know, early 20s, in the 1990s, you were bombarded relentlessly from all corners of life with Mountain Dew marketing. Um, yeah, it tastes like goat piss, but we drank it anyways and we didn't give a shit. And Pepsi acknowledged it tastes like goat piss because in the late 90s, they did something for the first time they've never done before. They add flavoring to it. Their first attempt at a flavor was Code Red. A rush of cherry, as they call it. And the cherry flavor somehow miraculously covered up the goat piss aftertaste. And made Mountain Dew drinkable. And sales went through the fucking roof. And then... Pepsi executives were like, hey, people like this cherry Mountain Dew. Let's try other flavors. And today we have 10,000 flavors of Mountain Dew as a result of this. Because nobody wants to drink the goat piss. But we're so inundated with MTV telling us drink Mountain Dew. PlayStation telling us drink Mountain Dew. Fucking 
you know, X Games and fucking Seinfeld and everybody else on TV saying, drink Mountain Dew, we fell for it. And hey, I drink a, I drink more than my share of Code Red Mountain Dew. I probably have one sitting around here somewhere. I had one recently. Yeah, I fell for it. We all did. You know, that's the power of marketing when you're a child. You're very easily duped. It's the reason why I spend thousands of dollars over the course of 30 years buying toys that the advertisers told me to buy. It, hey, it happens. As a company, Pepsi was not as successful as Coca-Cola as a soft drink beverage company, so they expanded. They got into the foods business. Um, so Pepsi Foods, you're very familiar with. Uh, their brands include Frito-Lay and their 10,000 varieties of Doritos, Cheetos, and Ruffles and Lays. Um, also Quaker Oats and some, other, some candy bars and other stuff. They're real big in the food business. Also, sometime in the 80s or 90s, you know, when the cocaine ruled the world and the rich people were beyond excessive well they still are but you know reagan's america as they call it capitalism went on a rampage and pepsi decided to get into the other side of the food business the restaurant business so they ended up buying a bunch of restaurants that you're familiar with and probably have given tons and tons of money over the years um now they would eventually um fold this uh what they referred to, it was, a, it was a branch of Pepsi Foods. Uh, they would eventually fold it into a separate company, Yum Brands, and then spin it off into its own company. So today, Pepsi no longer owns outright Yum Brands, but they did at one point in time. And they still have distribution deals with these restaurants. They still sell Pepsi products at these restaurants. What are the restaurants? Well, they're all mega big. Um... KFC, you've heard of. Taco Bell, you've heard of. Pizza Hut, Long John Silver's, A&W, you've heard of all of these restaurants. They're all owned by Pepsi. Or were at one time. Excuse me, I gotta blow my nose. Um, so there is that. Now, Coca-Cola took a different route. They expanded as well, aggressively. Uh, but they weren't out there buying snack food companies. They were out there buying other beverage companies and cutting deals with other beverage companies. Um, most notably, they cut a deal. Well, they, I, I believe they either bought out or they launched Sprite at some point. But they have some sort of deal with, um, I think, I don't know if it's Rockstar or Monster, or one of the energy drink companies, or something like that. I don't know. They got into, they expanded into other other beverage businesses, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, but they didn't need to, because Coca-Cola is king of the world. Um, you know, Diet Coke is a tremendously popular drink, and other varieties of Coke are, you know, very popular, fairly acceptable alternatives to the OG classic if for whatever reason you can't drink it or don't prefer it not to say coke doesn't have their missteps they had that I don't know starlight or whatever the fuck it was you know dirt in a bottle is what I call it um, they've had some missteps they famously had new coke um, when I was a baby so I don't remember it but I've seen so many references to it in YouTube videos and documentaries and VH1 retrospectives etc yeah, sure, I know what it is, but who gives a fuck? It's in the past, it's over, it's done with. Anyways, been talked to to death. Coca-Cola also famously is is well known among uh, trinket, we'll say, trinket collectibles, collectors, because they do mugs and cups and, you know, buttons and little fucking calendars and knickknacks and all kinds of shit. If you want to collect shit with Coca-Cola's branding on it, you're in luck. 
there's like excessive amounts of it out there. <laughs> Excuse me. God damn it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> However, if you're looking for um comparable Pepsi collectibles, you're more or less SOL outside of a Japanese exclusive PlayStation 1 video game Pepsi Man. There's not a whole lot of Pepsi product out there to collect. Yeah, Pizza Hut has some glass mugs or cups from the late 80s, early 90s, I guess, if you want to count that. But beyond that, there's just not as much, you know, Pepsi product in the collectibles market as there is Coke. Which takes us to the next um, round of um, differences, I guess, between the two companies. Uh, don't get me wrong, Coca-Cola still advertises. They absolutely do. They use Santa Claus and the, the polar bears and stuff like that. But Coca-Cola's marketing is more of a it's an all-American classic. It's a piece of Americana. Whereas Pepsi's marketing is, hey, if you drink us, you're cool. They target the youth market. And where they fail to take away market share from Coke, as I mentioned previously, they do succeed rather well uh, doing so in the Mountain Dew market. Um, so... If Pepsi didn't have Mountain Dew and didn't invest in Yum! Brands over the years or Frito-Lay, they probably would have gone the way of RC Cola by now. Nobody fucking drinks Pepsi. It, face, it tastes like fucking toilet water. Dirty toilet water. The day after New Year's, you can fill in the blanks. I prefer Mountain Dew as a drink over anything Coke does. I just think Coke is um, just a better company. And I don't mean better in we should root for them. It's just like, hey, they do it better than Pepsi does is all I'm saying. Stay cool.